Hi everyone, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. Today I have a quick, hopefully quick, Friday Reads video for you. I managed to finish five books this week, um, despite the fact that I could hardly concentrate on anything at all. Two of them are larger books that are mostly pictures, so that really worked in my favor. And Insomnia is back again, so that worked in my favor for reading as well. So, <clears throat> excuse me, without further ado, let's get started. The first one I read was Amphigory Again by Edward Gorey. This is just a collection of some of his individual illustrations, his alphabet books. I'm not sure what he calls them. I'm sure it's a crazy name. There are several of his books in here. Um, the Tragic Topiaries are in here. The Unknown Vegetable is in here. The Other Statue is in here. Um, the Deadly Blotter. The Haunted Tea Cozy. So there are some of his shorter books in here along with just his illustrations. And this was really wonderful to read through. I'm glad that I pulled it off my shelf for the Read Doris tag um, because I really, I enjoyed the time I spent with this and I look forward to flipping through this and reading this again in future. I have to find where my Amphigori also edition is. It must be in the basement because I don't know where it is. But this was really good. Of course, I recommend it because it's Edward Gorey. And then next up is another one I read because of Doris's tag. That is Century Girl. The life in oh, 100 Years in the Life of Doris Eaton Travis, Last Living Star of the Ziegfeld Follies by Lauren Redness. Um, this was the D is for Doris prompt. And I really enjoyed... Um, the scrapbooky nature of this. I love her illustrations and how she works. It's all handwritten unless it's a something from a um, newspaper clipping. But I love how she just works everything in. I mean, look at this. Beautiful. Um, what a character. What a fascinating life she led. I really admire her. I mean, hardworking and her whole family was really hardworking. Um, kind of a tragic life sometimes with her siblings and I don't know but it was just really really lovely and it was nice to dip into this book and escape real life for a while and see what it was like a hundred plus years ago in New York City on Broadway. So really recommend. It was really really lovely. Then I have two ebooks that I finished. They're both already returned to the library, so I can't hold up a picture or anything. But the first one is Murder at the Mansion by Sheila Connolly. Sheila Connolly is um, a writer that she's writing the County Cork Mystery Series I'm also reading. So this Murder at the Mansion is the start to another one of her cozy mystery series. This one looks like it's going to involve, oh my gosh, I forgot her name. <laughs> I have no idea what the main character's name is. That is horrible. Anyways, she works at a boutique hotel uh, just outside of Baltimore and her friend calls her and her high school friend calls her back to their hometown saying that they need help trying to figure out how to save the town because they're going to lose everybody and they have no money coming in, all this stuff. So she goes there, sees her friend, talks to the council and the only asset that the town has is this big mansion on a sprawling estate that a man lived in. He was always, always very secretive, but he moved into, this, into the town after the Civil War ended and built a big factory that made something. They don't know what. And then he also has this mansion. Um, so she's touring the mansion and um, talking to the caretaker who is there on behalf of the town as he's doing a sabbatical for a year working on his PhD, I believe, from um, some university on the East Coast. I don't know which. Doesn't matter. Anyways, so she's talking to him and um, her high school nemesis is on the board, is on the city council board. No one likes her in town. She's always been a big old bitch and she still is very self-serving. So, you know, she is found dead with her head smashed in by a rock on the front steps of this mansion. Um, so, of course, the main character gets involved and tries to help solve things. The police like, give her the okay to involve her because she knows people and knows old scores and things like that. Um, it was interesting. I, the person who murdered the big old bitch, she, I knew who it was right away. I mean, I, as soon as they introduced this person, I was like, oh yeah, they did it. You know, I, 
but it was still enjoyable. I liked hearing about the town and the history of, I mean, I'm sure, I know it's fake, but the history of this mansion and how detailed it was. And so it was good. I gave it three stars. It was, it was good. Um, I'll read the next of, rest of them whenever they come up next. I'm not in a big rush. They're just in my holds list on my ebook library and my queue, my library, I should say. So the next one is another ebook that was All the President's Menus by Julie Hizzy. This is the eighth in the um, Olivia Paris White House Chef Mystery Series. And second to last one, which is unfortunate because I really enjoy these. Olivia, um, I like her as a character. She seems fairly practical. She pays attention. Uh, she notices things. She understands how people work. And that's how she ends up involving herself in a lot of crazy murders and kidnappings and all sorts of stuff that happened to her. Um, in this one, there are, there are two, no, excuse me, four chefs coming to work in the White House for two weeks in the kitchens. They are from a fake country called Sardassia. And it seems like they're um, under a lot of strife. No one really likes them in the world. They're uh, it sort of reminds me of like nor some like North Korea combination with like a uh, Greek country and maybe Iraq a little bit too. It's, it's a weird combination of what it sort of feels like. So of course these guys seem suspicious. They're talking in their own language and they're not supposed to and you know um, chaos ensues. I like everything about this. It was really enjoyable. And I look forward to reading the last one. I It's a bummer that's the last one, but Julie Hizzy is a great writer. And this is one mystery, cozy mystery series that I would recommend more than most other ones to people who are looking to start. I don't remember the name of the first one, but they all have clever punny names. So that was four stars, all the president's menus. And the last one I finished this week, which I just finished last night, early this morning at 1.30 in the morning, and that is The Life and Loves of a He-Devil by Graham Norton. I have been a fan of Graham Norton's for, I'm going to say, 20 years at least, and I don't have his fiction work yet. I just have his, this is the third of three nonfiction books that he's written, and I just inhaled this in two nights. It was, it was his humor, and it was sincere and heartfelt, and you get to know him a little bit better. You see his life after his previous autobiography memoir left off. Uh, that was called So by Graham Norton. So you see that. He talks about boyfriends. He talks about dogs. His childhood growing up in Ireland, in Cork, and um, Ireland itself, how he fell back in love with his home country and how his show and career has evolved over the years because he loves working. And it was... I, I can't recommend it highly enough. If you like Graham Norton, you will love this book. There's no question about it. I mean, he's just wonderful. So four and a half stars. So that's all I have for reading this week. I have three links I'm going to give you guys this week. However, instead of just one for Call Me Music, the first one is for Jamie Riddler. She is an artist and creative in Toronto. She just... Last night, I think yesterday, posted her first video back in about nine months. She and her husband gutted their house and rebuilt everything so that she's back in. They're still putting things away, but she's there again. So she is blessed, has blessed us with um, her latest in the behind the studio videos. She usually does them once a week and it's, you know, 10 to 15 minutes of talking about life, where she's at, um, being a creative or sensitive person in the world. And it was so delightful to see her again and see the house, which is always nice, too. I love seeing people's houses. It's a beautiful space. They really, it's lovely, a lovely house. But what she said and what she talked about really hit home for me. And she's been talking about working from home so much and everyone, hopefully, self-sequestering. How it became, it has become clear to her, not only in the... Um, getting rid of things when she was packing up to move out of the house, what they were able to let go of. But also as she is moving in again now and unpacking her things, she's realizing what she really wants in her life. And she talked about how she wants to really live in her house and live life in her house and not be living in a storage facility for her past memories. Not that you're throwing everything away, certainly, but 
you know, you really want to be more careful about what you have around you. And as someone who has tons of stuff around them, a lot of it from my grandparents and great, great grandparents and great, great, great grandparents, a lot of it can go, you know, I wasn't able to let go of things before. And I'm finally there now where I'm going to be able to get rid of things and focus more on what I want for myself. I am, you know, midlife and it's made me reevaluate a lot of things. And anyways, I really appreciated what she had to say and I will link her new video. I hope you guys can go check her out. I really like her work. Um, yeah. So for music, I have two things today. The first one is a pick that I have. It's by uh, Michael Hoppy. He is a, a, fl a flautist, mostly does the alto flute. And there are two, um, he has several CDs, but two of them kind of go together, work together. And this um, will be the Waltz of Whispers with the song. This is the first of that duology. I can't find the CDs to save my life. It's driving me bonkers because I know they are here and not at the office. But it's a lovely song. It's really quiet and calming and it seems familiar, but it's an original song. So I, I'm not sure how that is. That's maybe four or five minutes long. And then the next one is one my mom, my mom picked. So she was diagnosed with stage four breast cancer six years ago, almost six years ago. And when she was through lumpectomies, she had two of them. When she was through chemotherapy and she was into radiation, so sort of the home stretch of treatment, it was torturous for her because you have to lay so uncomfortably if anyone has known anyone or you've been through it yourself you know what it's like they make a custom mold to fit wherever you are and they tattoo you so they can line up the guides for the radiation treatment and you have to not move the whole time you are it's you're actively being treated but it's a lot of putzing and futzing to get everything just perfect and your arm adjusted just slightly or you know so they had music on every time she went in and it was more often than not, this CD. And she said it was the only thing that really kept her marginally sane because she just hated being trapped like that and it was so horrible. And she's luckily able now to listen to this CD and this artist and not have any flashbacks, but just look on it and think, that got me through, I'm so grateful. So the artist is Sharon Isbin. She is a guitarist, classical guitarist. She does a lot of Spanish, Brazilian guitar. Um, this is from her album. The album that she listened to a lot was called, oh my gosh, I can't read my own writing. Sharon Isbin and Friends, Guitar Passions. So uh, the video I found is her covering Asturias by Isaac Albanese. It's a lovely song. It starts out a little quicker and then it becomes slow and it just keeps going. It's seven or eight minutes long. Um, on this album, she works with, um, I had to write these people's names down because I just know their voices and not their names. So she works with uh, Rosa Passos, who is a Brazilian singer and guitarist. She works with Stanley Jordan. He is a guitarist. I think he first came up in the 90s. I'm not sure, but um, great guitarist. And she also worked on this with Nancy Wilson from Heart. And Heart is just fabulous. It's just, I love Nancy and Anne. So some extra music for you, an extra little link to, for you today. I hope that um, you're all doing well. I will be back hopefully shortly with another video. I'm thinking about doing an April TBR. I hesitate to do it just because once I make a list, I tend to not stick to it and I sort of relegate those books to just living in that list forever and not actually reading them. So you might see that over the weekend or on Monday or something. Um, but yeah. That's kind of it for me. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're staying home, staying safe, washing hands, wiping down packages, the new normal, unfortunately, but be well. I hope you can read something wonderful and I will see you all very soon. Bye.